Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, 12th Gen CPU reviews are out. 12th Gen officially won't work on all games. AMD's answer to Alder Lake is 4D, and it's a beast. And AMD just showed off the first MCM GPU. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, Intel's 12th Gen CPU reviews have finally dropped, and they're about what we've seen leaked. After years of playing second fiddle to Ryzen, Intel is finally back. The company's new flagship 12900K is a beast in gaming and professional workloads, though in certain scenarios the 12900K sucks power like no tomorrow, and it gets really hot, so it sort of goes back to efficiency cores being a bit odd for desktop especially in workloads that take every ounce of juice the CPU can give. Still, the 12900K is impressive, but it's the i5 model that really shines if you ask me. The 12600K tends to beat out the 5600X and 5800X in gaming, though there is some variance in Windows 10. Really, with all of 12th Gen there is, so I'd stay away from Alder Lake if you aren't planning to use Windows 11. One thing that's pretty odd is that DDR4 can do better than DDR5 in certain scenarios, which I definitely suggest checking out my top Z690 board video if you're interested in picking up a 12th gen CPU. At the end of the day, I really think Intel's 12th gen is a win, but there are some important caveats to keep in mind. Did you know that you're missing out on hundreds of TV shows and movies right now? And you can get them all for just $1.39 a month with today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. See, if you watch Netflix, Hulu, or nearly any streaming service, they block shows based on your geographic location. And Atlas VPN is one of the least expensive ways around that. All you've got to do is open Atlas VPN on whatever device you use because it supports them all. Connect to the country you want to get the movies for, reload the streaming app, and there you go. Not only that, but you get all the benefits of a VPN, like encrypting your data and hiding your virtual location. And when you click the special link in the description, you get early access to Atlas VPN's Black Friday deal with 86% off and three extra months for free. So check that out below. Next up, while talking 12th gen caveats, if you followed the channel, you know that a little while back, we found out from a developer guide that some games won't work with 12th gen CPUs, specifically that the hybrid core architecture causes an issue with the DRM software. Well, it looks like that was correct, as Intel officially has a list of games that aren't supported by their new CPUs. Oddly enough, as you can see, the operating system you use affects whether the game works or not. And what's wild is that a lot of these are really new, which makes me wonder if this is a complete list. Either way, these games here are incompatible with Windows 10 and Windows 11, but the games in bold will have a Windows 11 update patch by mid-November. I guess if you're on Windows 10, you're not getting a patch? I'm not sure. Either way, these games down here are incompatible in just Windows 10. Now, with that said, there is a workaround, but it completely sucks. It involves having your system turn off eCores when you're gaming, which means you'd lose a ton of performance. So hopefully they fix the issue in all of these games, but it's really just surprising they aren't already fixed. Next up for today, we have a leak that proves AMD isn't taking Intel's Alder Lake release sitting down. The story originally comes from Moore's Law is Dead, where he goes over something called Zen 4D. And let's just say, I'm pumped. According to the leak, Zen 4D is a fork of Zen 4, which basically comes with a cut down cache system with less features and a lower clock. Also, AMD can increase density, which is likely what the D in 4D stands for. Either way, that effectively lets them double the cores in each chiplet. In Zen 3, you have 8 cores per chiplet, but Zen 4D brings in 16 cores per chiplet. And with double the cores in each chiplet, that's why AMD needed to lower the clock speed. That many cores means a ton of power draw. One source claims that Zen 4D comes with half the L3 cache, so it'll be interesting to see how AMD deals with the cross-chiplet communication. I guess with double the cores, it could potentially happen half the time, but we shall see. He also expects it to still have multi-threading enabled, but he isn't sure there. Now, so far, Moore's Law is Dead can only confirm that Zen 4D comes with Bergamo, which means server chips. But this actually isn't the first time we've seen Zen 4D mentioned. 
A while back, we saw it in a roadmap for Strix Point and likely Granite Ridge, but that one was edited out. Either way, Strix Point is set to be an upcoming APU, and as you can see, it mentions Zen 5 and Zen 4D. And here's the incredible part. Moore's Law is Dead claims that Zen 5 uses Zen 4D for its little cores. Now, I'm not sure if AMD will release a Ryzen CPU with just Zen 4D in it, but even with Zen 5, we'd be looking at a huge increase in cores, especially if Zen 4D still has multi-threading. And what's interesting about this approach is that AMD would be using the hybrid architecture to add a ton more cores instead of better efficiency like Intel. And I think that makes way more sense for desktop. Not only that, but the Zen 5 core allegedly has an unbelievable 20-40 40% IPC increase, and that's over Zen 4. Basically, AMD isn't slowing down their progress anytime soon. Unfortunately, it looks like we won't see a launch until late 2023, and potentially later for a Ryzen launch, but I'm pumped to see what AMD has up their sleeve. And speaking of what AMD is planning, the company just teased what should be the world's first MCM GPU. In a tweet from AMD's own CEO, Lisa Su, she stated that she's looking forward to showcasing their upcoming Epic and Instinct parts, and to join AMD on November 8th for their accelerated data center premiere. You can see that the image right here shows renders of their Instinct lineup. Specifically, we're talking their MI200 series. And like Video Cards mentions, they're confident this is the MI200 because it was confirmed to have an OAM connector, which is what we're seeing here. Now, the reason this is such a big deal is because the MI200 is set to be the world's first MCM GPU. And of course, I've gone over why that's so important multiple times, but basically, think of it as multiple GPUs combined on a single die, but software sees it as one GPU, or at least developers won't have to code much for it like Crossfire or SLI. It would allow for massive scaling similar to AMD's Zen architecture, and it's set to launch in just a few days. Go AMD! So while that does it for today, are you excited for the first MCM GPU? Or what about AMD's answer to Alderley? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!